the most anticipated shows of 2022. We wanted to start here because we kind of realized we're now in February Mm -hmm. and TV has just kept churning along. You know, we talked about Euphoria premiere, uh, Peacemaker, Station Eleven, right on the verge of being a 21-22 show. No one really knows how to categorize it. So a lot (laughs) of good TV has already come out. We're going to be talking about another anticipated TV show that just premiered today as of this recording on Wednesday, uh, 2 2 22, Derek Jeter Day. But mm. we wanted to kind of jump through these because there's a lot of great TV coming out and we're only kind of scratching the surface on the ones we'll probably get to. Um, why don't we start just like, what are you most, number one, most anticipated show of 2022? Yeah, just real quick. As you said, we're only going to scratch the surface here. We're going to cover about 50 shows, more or less. However, last year there were 559 scripted shows per FX research, the most ever made in one year. The previous high mark was 532 in 2019. So there's more and more. You can't watch it all. We try and pick the most significant, the most interesting. And I think this list of 50 will, in all likelihood, have most of those shows that end up on our top 10. Of course, there are always surprises and unexpected shows like Squid Game and The Queen's Gambit, etc. So I'm sure our lists will have stuff we don't even discuss at the end of the year. But of the stuff I'm most anticipated, and there's a lot of stuff I'm really excited about this year. I actually really like this list. Uh, you know, I feel like you have to kind of gravitate towards shows that are already, uh, you know, returning shows, shows that we've already seen a season or more of before, or like those big ticket franchise IP stuff. I feel like that's what just gets the most hype and excitement out of people. And it's hard. It's really hard. But I feel like the answer has to be Atlanta finally coming back for season three on FX on March 24th after a several year hiatus. But, um, you know, Atlanta, the best show on TV the two years it's been on TV before. So uh, the fact that it's coming back uh, very soon is, is great. Yeah. Uh, Atlanta, number one on the board for sure. Um, I, pretty much every time Atlanta is on, it's must watch television. It's one of the few shows, you know, similar to something like succession where you want to watch it when it happens. Cause then it just dominates the conversation for the next mm-hmm. couple of days around it. So uh, Atlanta is number one on my board as well. However, I think the number two on my board, and I, it, I was kind of going back and forth on this, but I think the number two on the board is the Lord of the Rings Amazon series, right? Yeah. Because <laughs> the Rings of Power, with the, September second. This, this is the one, dude. They're putting so much money into this show; it's basically make or break for Amazon. It feels like in terms of their fantasy TV. This is the one everybody's been hyping. It's coming out. Um, Head to head with Game of Thrones, probably not out at the same time, but in the same year, dropping a new Game of Thrones spinoff. So right. this is kind of like like Ali versus Frazier type shit going on. I'm really excited to see how this turns out. Yeah, I mean, they got the subtitle recently announced, The Rings of Power. We still haven't seen anything yet, but I mean, from what we do know, you know, young Galadriel cast, the second age, there's so much appealing stuff from a storytelling perspective for fans of Tolkien, but it's really going to be be able to be its own thing because it's set so far in the past from when the Hobbit and the Lord of the Rings uh, story that everyone knows takes place. So that's really exciting. And I mean, as you said, they spent so much money, $500 million just to have the rights, just to have the privilege to then spend hundreds of millions more dollars to actually make said show. Amazon uh, is put all the eggs in the basket, as you said. Bezos, huge Lord of the Rings fan. And he... uh dropped the bag many times over. So I'm really excited for this and can't wait to see a look. And I mean, they're, they're, they're making more, you know, it's not like the season is truly make or break, but there's just so much riding on it. Cause they really want this to be a huge hit, but they want this to be the biggest Amazon prime show ever. So yeah, absolutely. Can't wait. And, and I mentioned in there that it, we are going to get a new uh, game of Thrones spinoff. Finally, house of dragon, house of the dragon it's supposed mm-hmm. to be, premiering uh sometime this year i don't think there's a release date quite yet no. but i would suspect probably sometime like late summer into fall right for that. we got the trailer um i mean excitement level for that scale of one to ten uh ten ten for yeah. sure uh you know miguel sapochnik thrones veteran at the helm here but just like the, the actual subject matter is i think a really important one for game of thrones 
in a sense, it's a little safe for people that really know the story here. You know, the Dance with Dragons. This is, you know, backstory from when Game of Thrones, the, the, the series that everyone knows took place. However, that story, those that know it, everyone understands that this still will lead itself to everything that was appealing about Game of Thrones proper with the palace intrigue and the politics and the infighting and the backstabbing and everything. And the dragons, there'll be tons of dragons. Like the, everything you want from Thrones, this story will be able to give you. And you got like high tier actors like Matt Smith and uh, Olivia Cook in there. Like, I, I can't wait for this. It's going to be great. Yeah, I, I feel like that's going to live up, probably not to quite to the Thrones heights, but probably fairly close, I'd imagine. Okay, so what else is, is on top of your draft board for most anticipated TV shows? Yeah, those are good. Uh, we got to shout out the final season of better call Saul on amc yeah bob odenkirk uh, injured uh on set uh oh, actually I think really, really health uh health scare i think it was the yeah. really injury but uh that'll be coming out this year the final the final go around for peter gold and vince gilligan the the end of this breaking bad series uh however as we know the last season of Saul, i believe that was season five we had really finally brought Saul to breaking bad like the the two shows had truly met from a plot perspective and now we're going to see that conclusion tony Dahl and such a uh, star in the last season still going to be here for the final season so much so many loose ends uh to tie up here you know what happens to kim etc so uh, you know it'll be really good so can't wait for this it's been a long wait yeah man saul ah yeah it, it feels uh it feels so crazy because i feel like that la- the last season that we watched and talked about Tony Dahl in some of those episodes just uh, still stick out in my mind so much that it feels like it hasn't been off the air that long. I'm just so excited mm-hmm. to have it back. Um, another show that, that's coming back, I'm excited to see Barry on HBO. Yeah. Season uh, three. Back for se- yeah, third season. Um, Bill Hader, you know, still doing his thing. Uh, I, I'm trying to think, like, <sighs> what other comedy, I mean, I, this is really a dramedy, I guess, at this point. That right. is funny of a show as maybe you would categorize a comedy but what other comedies really stand out like that i mean i guess like russian doll which is also coming back this year yeah, is kind of in that category uh, what we do in the shadows would be if we knew that they were coming this season but barry is really one of those like premier comedies right now that it is definitely at. haters and, and crew spend a lot of time refining scripts for this season and future seasons just because they had time during the pandemic this was definitely uh, covid uh, impacted this production but barry season two was was so excellent and had you know built upon barry season one i mean uh dramatically there was a lot of tension at the end of season two as well so it's um you know i'm sure that'll pick up uh you know right where it left off and be pretty pretty propulsive so that's great absolutely so what else do you got uh yeah those are those are a lot of the really good ones uh you know Probably not as uh, famous, but very uh, excited for Industry Season 2, BBC mm-hmm. and HBO. Uh, they finished filming that, so that'll be coming sometime this year. Industry Season 1, one of those surprise shows that no one was really uh, expecting, but a uh, you know, really compelling cast of unknowns and just, uh, honestly, a dynamite concept of the cutthroat nature of young people in you know competitive uh, high finance you know in, in london uh, everything was about was great uh mile harold her character was i think really compelling uh, especially by the end of that season so just just to get more of this just to get more of that world uh you know i can't wait to see that mickey down and conrad k seem to be really uh thoughtful uh creators and, and showrunners and whatnot so really looking forward to this one yeah industry was one of your yeah, top shows of 2020, I believe, and uh, right. well earned. Uh, a fun ride and absolutely just a captivating world to be in. Definitely up there on my list. Um, you know, kind of just looking down the list here. I, I, we were just talking about comedies, and I don't know if this one is totally a comedy, but Marvel's Mrs. Maisel coming back yeah. for another season. And I gotta say, uh, I'm excited to be back with Rachel Brosnahan. Uh, she's awesome in that role. Uh, I love being in that world. Last season had more ups and downs. So this is, you know, kind of feels like a, a teetering season. It could continue down that trend or maybe redeem itself. But I have confidence that they're going to write the ship there. Yeah, definitely looking forward to that as well. Another one, COVID impacted just because those are such, you know, lavish, uh, intricate productions, period productions. But 
even if you know, like that's thing like even if it's not like as you know eye catching as the way season one was, you still have that Sherman Palladino dialogue and all these great performances of this pretty flushed out ensemble at this point. So even even if that show spins its wheels, I feel like it's still a pretty high floor. So looking forward to it. It's coming up really, uh, really soon uh, later this month. Yeah, another show that is also coming up uh, actually. I think sometime next week, I think next uh, Friday, is Inventing Anna on Netflix yeah. about the uh, heiress Anna D- Develany, I believe, right. from Instagram at fame. Um, I-, I think that has potential to be pretty intriguing, too. A nice early year show, which, I mean, with TV, it's a little more spaced out than the movies usually are in terms of quality. But um, I-, I have high hopes that that will be a, a captivating watch. Yeah, well, I think there's two key pieces with that. It seems like the concept, it's concept source material is good, but Julia Garner in the lead, Emmy yeah. winner. Uh, and also, this is the first Shonda Rhimes Netflix show. The first, yeah. you know, f- finally the first creation from Netflix Shondaland. Like, it's been been a long time coming. And hopefully, actually, sorry, that's a, it's a second show. But, uh, first one since Bridgerton. Uh, oh, but hey. <laughs> it's so what, the, like uh, the biggest show of... Yeah, us. yeah. <laughs> first one i'll be watching sorry I'm right uh but seems like there's a lot riding on this one too but uh, i've I, you know whenever there's any kind of like real world source material for something like this when you have a high level creator i feel like there's a little, like a lot of potential so exciting definitely what so give me another show that you're looking forward to uh yeah so you know I, we wrote down hacks here it was such a surprise last year at season one they're making season two. I'm not sure if we're going to get that this year, but should just shout that out because in terms of dramedies, like like a Barry, you know, a uh, really high level there. Uh, let's see. Uh, the Hub at the Boys, season yeah. three, Amazon, June 3rd. Um, you know, the boys in terms of lampooning and taking the piss out of superhero culture in a really engaging way doesn't you know, lack for uh, action nor violence, but I had a lot of memorable characters at this point. Uh, you know, I, I think the boys, uh, how can you not be excited for it? Uh, season two was such a high level. They're making so many spinoffs for this already, but just to get back with uh, this core group again, uh, you know, I, I don't really know where it's going to go, but I just really liked where it ended. So can't, can't wait. I was going to say great choice. It was almost like the reverse um, like Star Wars choice to make the second season have Highlander be fallible and actually like someone that could be beaten because he seems so right. invincible to this point. And now it feels like the show's stakes are kind of like back on track, which I, I really appreciate. Um, I'm looking forward to the boys a lot. Yeah. And let, let's Homelander. Just Homelander, not oh, Highlander. <laughs> Highlander. I'm sorry. <laughs> Think about the car. Um, uh, let's just stay in the superhero world because mm. Disney Plus, Marvel, we, yep. we talked about this a few weeks ago, but they got at least four shows coming out this year in terms of superheroes. We got uh, Moon Knight, which will be premiering fairly soon. If I'm March correct. 30th. Yeah. So n- next month uh, we have She-Hulk, Mrs. Marvel or Miss Marvel, I should say, and Secret yeah. Invasion. And yeah. we talked about that, uh, like which one we were most excited for. I think you said Moon Knight. And yeah, is that still true? It is just because I feel like Moon Knight has the best potential to be something a little outside the traditional Marvel mold. Whether they actually go there, go all the way, remains to be seen. I think a lot of the feedback on that first trailer was that you might be getting a lot of non-traditional stuff, except when Moon Knight's actually being Moon Knight, which is also Mm -hmm. part of that trailer. So remains to be seen. But Oscar Isaac in a lead role, uh, obviously you have to watch that. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'm excited for that, although I didn't love the trailer. So yeah. we'll, we'll see how that, that comes about. Um, Miss Marvel feels like the show that may be most uh, indicative of things to come. Yeah, I think She-Hulk obviously is also going to be a part of the MCU moving forward. Um, but I think Miss Marvel feels like a, a part that they're going to try to build off of, uh, along with like the Kate Bishop of uh, Hawkeye yeah. uh, kind of thing. Um, the secret invasion, uh, I think is the most intriguing only because of the number of high quality actors attached mm-hmm. to that, as well as I think the, the possibilities with the, the, whether the krill, is that their name? Uh, the scrolls. <laughs> scrolls. <laughs> the you're scrolls. thinking of the Cree, the blue guys and guardians. That's what you're thinking of. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't know how I get all these things confused. The green guys, the blue guys, I don't know. But, uh, 
yeah, with, with all the possibilities of them being able to, uh, you know, basically become other people or look like other people, you know, you can do a lot with that. So I think that will be pretty interesting. And why don't we just stay right on Disney Plus mm. and Mandalorian season three? Uh, I'm not caught up on Book of Boba Fett, but I know Mando is somewhere involved in this season from what I understand. Indeed. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him. But Mando season three, I mean, how can you not want to know where they go next now that Grogu is united with Luke? I'm, I'm all in. Let, let's see where this goes. Uh, definitely. Definitely. Um, Favreau and Filoni and everyone just have been operating at such a high level that they've earned the benefit of the doubt. So can't wait. Season two is excellent. Uh, you were also getting Andor, the Catch and Andor Rogue One spinoff uh, sometime this year, as well as Obi-Wan Kenobi, of course, the Ewan McGregor return to Obi-Wan. So three big Star Wars shows, the most they've done, actually definitely four, because Boba Fett's on this year too, four Star Wars shows in one year, the same year they're doing four uh, live action Marvel shows, Disney Plus really they don't have a lot, but what they do have are are, are the big guns, you know? <laughs> Uh, is Mando season three your most anticipated of the three Star Wars shows to come? No, Kenobi is by far my most anticipated yeah, for this year. So Just because the unknown of it, you yeah. know, Hayden Christensen returning exactly. to the role of Vader, how that comes to be very uh, uh, thought provoking, whether it's in a dream sequence or notably not in a dream sequence or a flashback. That is what I'm most focused on. But you know what? Andor thugs a little under the radar. Tony Gilroy, though, involved heavily in this show, largely credited as the savior of Rogue One in the first place, which Rogue One was a big success at the end of the day. So and maybe the show will get a little darker the way Rogue One was, especially because we kind of know uh, how it's going to end one way or the other. So uh, overall, very, very uh, excited about this. And we might even get Bad Batch season two this year. We might get Marvel's What If season two this year, too. Not really sure about those as well. But uh, probably shaping up to be Disney Plus's best uh, year yet, I'd have to say. Absolutely. It's it's looking very promising. We're kind of uh, finally starting to get some of those uh, like spinoff series that we were looking forward to when it dropped. Um any other big franchise shows that you wanted to shout out? Yeah, uh, three in particular. So Halo's coming the soonest. Paramount Plus, March 24th, originally developed as a Showtime show. We really have no idea if this is going to be any good or not, but Viacom has been developing this for a very long time. It's been through multiple showrunners. It got announced that they're eyeing probably another new showrunner for season two, but it does look the part from that first trailer. Whether it's successfully adapted, obviously it's a tall task, given that Halo is pretty uh, lore intensive, but also it's a video game adaptation. We don't have a good track record with these. Uh, I love Halo. I've played all these campaigns. Uh, this is notably non-canon, so they're not going to be boxed in on what they, well, how they can tell this story. I think that was a smart choice. Uh, we'll see about this one, but I hope it's good. Similarly, I hope The Last of Us on HBO uh, is good. You got Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey leading that series. Craig Mazin from Chernobyl at the helm. Neil Druckmann, creator of the game, heavily involved. This show doesn't stop filming though until June 2022, so I'm not positive we actually see this show this year, but those are two huge video game peak TV shows coming this year, right. so they'll have a lot of eyeballs. Definitely looking forward to both of those. The Halo one, um, um, I have a good feeling about it. I think that one's going to uh, go over pretty well. Um, there, there's a lot of new TV shows coming out, things that aren't attached to a, a past season or a new franchise. Mm -hmm. And so I want to save that just for one second, give a shout out to a few shows that um, are coming back as returning. White Lotus, I don't think we've, we've mentioned yet. Season yep. two, we've talked about the fact that it is coming back. Uh, Italy. Go look up the cast for this. Yep, you're in Italy. Uh, Aubrey Plaza leading the cast. Um, totally looking forward to what uh, can come out of that stranger things season four. four? Yep. Jeez. Uh, and the, the kids are going to be looking old <laughs> because they are not kids anymore. And uh, apparently Hopper is still alive. Who knows? But uh, Perry Mason is the last one I wanted to shout out. And, you yeah. know, I think, I think this one, just because I feel like 
it was a really quality show that just kind of got swept under the rug or mm. forgotten in a lot of ways. It, it did get some um, some love, uh, some nominations at the Academy, uh, Academy Awards, at the Emmys, but otherwise hasn't really been um, talked about a lot from what I've seen. So I'm looking yeah. forward to getting back uh, Matt Reese in that role. Right. Yeah, I think the, the Keeping the Watch with Perry Mason season two, which I believe started filming early this year. Maybe we get it this year, maybe we don't. But Perry Mason is now like the actual titular Perry Mason of, of old, where he'll be like, you know, in the courtroom more. So the show might start to evolve a little bit more. The cast seems to be uh, changing as well. So looking forward to it just because everything about the first season was, you know, really high end. So ho- hopefully Absolutely. that does show up this year. Uh, so give me a couple of those uh, new non franchise shows that you're looking forward to this year. Yeah, so in March on HBO, we get Winning Time, the uh, oh, yeah. Showtime Lakers series about you know Magic, jo- uh, Magic Johnson and you know uh, Jerry Buss, played by John C. Riley. Uh, that show looks really good. The tone seemed to be good. Madam McKay was involved in the creation of this show. Uh, I'd love to be right on the corner. That sounds good. Another thing that like you kind of just probably know what's good, know what it is, and you expect it to be good would be We Own the City. That's the new. David Simon limited series. This one set uh, back in his home of Baltimore, where he's of course told many stories before, and of course is starring uh, John Bernthal. Because yeah. why wouldn't it be? Sounds great. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm totally totally looking forward to that. Um, you know, one that is really really intriguing to me is 1899, a Netflix yeah. show coming out, uh, like a historical sci-fi type thing mm-hmm. where this uh, boat of, of immigrants going to the United States from London uh, meets this other boat and things just kind of seem to go awry from there. And I don't really know too much more about it from there. I don't really want to know too much more from there, mm. uh, but I'm, I am I love that premise and I think it has some uh, potential. Yeah. 1889 is the new show from the creators of dark, which was the Netflix uh, German series. That was a huge hit famous for being really out there and and detailed with its plot so expect 1899 to follow suit also if you're interested read up on the creation of this series netflix is making a huge imprint in germany in terms of its facilities kind of similar to how disney has made a big manhattan beach uh stagecraft technology film uh, imprint for its star wars shows netflix is doing kind of similar innovation in germany for this show so it'll probably look amazing yeah, I think I, I think that one's going to be fantastic. Um, you know, another one that is really interesting to me is Pachinko, going to be mm-hmm. on Apple Plus. Um, a lot of great actors in this: um, Lee Min Ho, uh, Yu Yoon Young Jun, um, Jin Ha, Anna Sawai. I mean, the list goes on here. And following, it, it's a, based on the bestseller, New York Times bestseller uh, of the same name. Following uh, Korean. Uh, and a Korean immigrant family through four mm. generations um, and kind of their story, uh, how it evolves. I think this, this is probably going to just be fantastic is my, my guess. So yeah. Uh, premiering on March 25th, Koganada directed a uh, half of this series as well. So yeah, looking forward to it. Don't really know much more, but I don't, I don't need to, I'll be checking it out. If you want to hear our thoughts on Koganada, go listen to the after Yang review we did last week. Uh, SoundCloud or YouTube.com slash Nostalgia Pod, I should say. Um, Dave, I mean, a couple of HBO shows here that are coming out that seem really interesting. Tokyo Vice, um, yep. following uh, or telling the story of American journalist Jake Adelstein and how he goes to Tokyo to report on the Vice Squad, which my understanding is that's like a, a maf- mafia gang in uh, yep. Japan. So I'm mm-hmm. um, looking forward to that. Yeah, um, Michael Mann involved in the creation of that thing is it does star Ansel Elgort though so TBD on how compelling it ends up being <laughs> uh also shout out to our guy Ken Watanabe who's hell yeah uh, and just gonna He's be great. fantastic um another one that seems really interesting is uh the White House Plumbers yeah <laughs> I mean the cast alone pretty interesting Woody Harrelson Justin Th- Thoreau Dom Hall Gleason Lena Headey I mean, the list goes on here, but uh, just read just reading the premise real quick. The Watergate masterminds and President Richard Nixon's political mutineers 
uh, I accidentally overturned the presidency they were trying to protect. I mean, who doesn't want to tune into that and, and see this cast do this? Um, it is based Definitely. off a novel called Integrity from 2007, 2007. But I think this is a rich text to, to dig into from what Def- the sounds of it. Def- Definitely. And uh, it's really funny that there's a similar Watergate series, Gaslit, with Sean Penn <laughs> premiering on Stars later this year as well. So they will obviously be compared, but White House Plumbers, being that it's an HBO production, probably is the, the leader right now. But yeah, really exciting just to see something like that dramatized with, you know, like it's a simple premise for a limited series, but, you know, there's a reason people keep doing these kind of shows because they work. Totally. Um, give me a give me a couple other shows and we'll, we'll wrap it up. next. Yeah. So uh, Masters of the Air will be premiering on Apple. That's the latest World War Two dramatization from Plato, the same producers that made Band of Brothers and the Pacific. This one, as the name suggests, is focused on uh, air combat. So if the Band of Brothers and the Pacific is anything to go by, this will probably be really spectacular and has a pretty uh, impressive uh, young cast, Fiona Shea, uh, Austin Butler, uh, and Carrie Fukunawa was uh, involved in the creation of this, this series. So that that's really exciting. Uh, I'm also looking forward to the offer on Paramount Plus at the end of April about the creation of The Godfather. Miles Teller's, Teller is involved in this one. They're also making a film about this, you know, like, you know, Robert Evans, famous producer, the film with Barry Levinson and uh, Jake Gyllenhaal and Oscar Isaac, I believe that's also on the way. So we'll definitely be comparing the series versus that movie in due time. But uh, it's a really rich uh, subject if you know the story. So that'll be cool. And lastly, uh, Conversations with Friends on Hulu. That is a Sally Rooney adaptation from Lenny Abramson. Lenny Abramson, of course, adapted Sally Rooney's book, Normal People, two years ago. I love Normal People, so uh, very excited uh, to see one of her other hit books that some fans actually think is better than Normal People. To see this adapted, very exciting. Yeah, definitely very exciting. Uh, you got Joe Alwyn in that so yeah. and, and Jemima Kirk, so I'm hoping to get a lot of them. Uh, last one I want to shout out, and then maybe we'll wrap up unless you had any others you want to mm. give a little shine to. Um, Apple TV Plus, uh, I don't, I, I couldn't find if there's a release date for this, but disclaimer um, coming yes. out later on this year. Kate Blanchett and Kevin Klein, um, based on a novel by Renee Knight. And the premise, from what I can gather, is pretty much uh, one of them is a documentary journalist, and uh, Kate Blanchett is, and she has to, uh, I don't know, it have this. Uh, interview or this documentary about mm. kevin klein is the sense i get it seems like it's gonna be pretty interesting but kate blanchett on tv like yeah give it to yep. me all of it this is mrs america huge hit also the disclaimer is alfonso cuaron doing tv oh, yeah. there so what whether that i don't know if that's begun filming yet so that might not come this year but that's definitely a must watch once it comes out um there's a few other things that are notable that i'm not like super excited about obviously uh, Westworld's coming back once again. You can check our thoughts on that on the channel. Uh, Killing, Killing Eve is coming back for its uh, fourth and final season. Again, not feeling too good about that one. Um, Netflix's live action Avatar The Last Airbender uh, remake spinoff new 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 inspiration is coming. Notably, the show uh, the creators of Avatar uh, left this project due to creative differences and decided to make their own Avatar Studios and do other stuff. So that compared, uh, combined with the new reception, the Cowboy Bebop at the end of 2021, doesn't leave me super optimistic. But if it is good, that'll be awesome because I do love Avatar The Last Airbender, but I'm not exactly holding my breath with this one. Well, we named uh, around 40 or more TV shows for this year. So if you can't find one of those to get pumped about, I don't know why you're following the pod, but you should follow us, youtube.com slash nostalgiapod, and let us know the shows that you are most anticipating this year 